Okay, so you found yourself with a case of SIBO and you took six months taking all these steps to wipe all these varmints out to get rid of it. And then three months later, all your symptoms come back. Oh, I got SIBO again. You're like, son of a sack of waffles. What is going on here? So if you're having a lot of SIBO relapse issues, you're about to find your answers. Do not miss this. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So if you're having SIBO relapse issues, put down in the comments. Let us know how many times they've had an issue coming back and what steps you're taking to try and get rid of that. But to understand SIBO relapse, we need to understand what usually causes SIBO in the first place. So we need to look at digestion. When we're eating food, our stomach makes hydrochloric acid or HCL. And this HCL is meant to help us break down our food so that we can access the nutrients in that food. And once that food is properly acidified, it leaves the stomach and goes into the duodenum or the first 10 inches of the small intestine. And that's where the gallbladder drops alkaline bile down onto this acidic product. So we have this acid product meeting an alkaline product and those pHs being so differently, when they connect, they create this sizzle. And this sizzle is what really busts that food apart so that we can access all the nutrients in that food. So the other issue that's really big with this is the stomach acid is the main barrier for the whole body. So when we're eating food, we're getting microbes coming into the system. It's just, it's impossible to avoid that fully. So when these microbes come in, the acid acidifies the food and it fries all these little varmints. They die in an acid bath. So this stomach acid is the biggest barrier to our whole body. The problem is there's a wide variety of issues that make a person not make enough stomach acid. And this is really common. We see this all the time. So when a person isn't making enough stomach acid, the varmints come in, they go through the stomach, they get into the small intestine where they, where they should not be and they set up camp and they thrive there. Hey, let's have a party, we're having a great time, and now you have SIBO. So here's the big problem, that a lot of people experience this SIBO issue, and then they start taking all these antimicrobials or antibiotics and all these steps to get rid of this overgrowth, but they never shut the front door. You know, if your house is full of flies, you would probably need some kind of fly swatter or some kind of fly trap. You would take those steps to get rid of the flies, but don't you think you might shut the front door too? You gotta shut the front door. So people try to take all these steps to improve their SIBO issue, but they never correct the malfunction that was creating it in the first place. They never reset up that stomach acid so that the stomach acid is there to not only help you acidify the food, but to be that barrier, to keep all the bad guys from coming in and setting up camp over and over again. So don't just take all those steps to wipe out your SIBO, Take the steps to also shut the front door so that you don't invite more bad guys right back in. Now the steps needed to restore that acid function in the stomach can vary from person to person. So we have a totally free online digestion course and we'll put the link to that free course in the description below this video. So you can sign up for the free course and it'll walk you through figuring out what aspects of digestion may not be working correctly for you and then the steps that you may need to take to correct those issues. So also understanding the other problems that this lack of stomach acid can create in regards to SIBO is also important. So jump over now and watch our video on the four most common causes for SIBO and that'll walk you through those other issues that it can create. I can't wait to hear about your results.